This presentation covers the Colorado Department of Transportation Soils Excavation and Embankment Inspection Manual. When you come in to certify, your certification will consist of two parts. First part will be uh, the WAQTC field operating procedures related to embankment and base and in place density certification. You'll be expected to take a written exam on those modules and then also perform practical examinations on those modules and we have training videos for each of those available to you. The second portion of your certification will involve uh, the CDOT soils excavation and embankment inspection manual. There will be an open book written exam and for that exam you will need your soils excavation and embankment inspection manual which is found in the latter half of the manual that you have downloaded from Ground Engineering's website on their registration page. So this PowerPoint covers that manual and it covers and highlights exam topics that you will see on your written exam. That written exam is 25 questions. You have 90 minutes to complete it and you need a 70 or better to pass it and you have two attempts to pass it. If you score below a 50 on that exam, on the first attempt, that's an indication to us that you are not prepared for the certification and we do not allow you to continue after that point. So as you are uh, observing this presentation, take notes because we do highlight materials that will show up on your written exam and follow along in your manual. The most current version of the CDOT Soils Excavation and Embankment Inspection Manual should have a date on it of October of 2019. If you have a hard copy of a manual that does not have that date for the CDOT Soils Inspection Manual, then you need to go onto Ground Engineering's website where you register for the WACTEC certification and download the latest manual and bring it in with you when you come in to certify. So, to begin, the first chapter of that soil inspection manual, it just deals with very basic road construction. So, road construction through a corridor, basically it involves alternating cuts and fills. We are going to cut away high spots and fill in low spots to create a profile for our desired road grade. What our designers attempt to do when they are designing the roadway and the alignment and the profile is we want to try to balance materials derived from the cuts with the quantities of material that will be needed for fill section. This saves money. If we have a project where we are not in balance, we are either left with an excess of material from cuts that we have to dispose of off-site or we have to basically build our embankments larger than they need to be and this costs money. Conversely, if we have a project where there is not many cut sections, but there are large fills, then we have to import material from a borrow source and pay for hauling costs, and that adds additional cost to the project. So cuts and fills. Basic terminology that you're going to be need to be familiar with as we continue through this presentation and as you read your manual. Um, this is a typical fill section and some of the definitions here. The ground surface, the native ground surface that a fill or an embankment is built on, we are going to refer to the, this as your embankment foundation. So all of the soils below the native ground surface comprise your embankment foundation and this supports the embankment. What we are going to use to bring the ground surface up to grade for our roadway is embankment fill. So this is any material that we are going to place to raise the grade above the native ground surface so that we get to our grade that is required for the roadway. Once we achieve final grade, or basically the base of our pavement section, this is referred to as subgrade elevation. Embankments are going to be constructed with a defined uh, side slope angle. 
this side slope angle is going to be a function of what is our embankment fill composed of and what is our embankment foundation soils composed of. If we have a lower quality embankment fill and low quality embankment foundations, we are going to have to construct our embankment side slopes with a shallower angle because that will improve our stability. If we have higher quality embankment fill and higher quality foundation material, we can steepen our side slopes and use less fill material because those materials will be more stable. Where our uh, embankment meets the native ground surf surface, that's considered the toe of the slope. Then, once we achieve subgrade, we then have our pavement section. So we may or may not have a layer of subbase. That is a separation layer. It can also be a drainage layer um, between the base course and the embankment fill. And we may or may not have a layer of base course, which is, again, a stabilizing layer and a drainage layer that goes beneath the pavement to separate between the embankment fill or the subbase. In the pavement. And then on top, we are going to place our pavement, either asphalt or concrete. So that is a typical fill section. For cut section, we have our native ground surface here. And we have our roadway alignment and profile grade that we need to establish. So basically, we are going to cut all of this material out, and some or all of it may be used elsewhere on the project to construct embankments. So once we cut down to the desired grade, that is considered our subgrade elevation, and everything below this is our subgrade and our roadway foundation materials. We may have a little sliver fill off to the side, and then again, our layer of subbase, perhaps, our layer of base course, perhaps, and then our pavement is going to go in. The cut slope itself, the angle, that we can cut with is going to be dependent on what these materials are composed of in the cut section and what are our materials in the roadway foundation and in our subgrade such that this cut slope remains stable and does not affect the roadway in the future. So what the soil inspector needs to have an understanding of is they are out in the field. We need the soil inspector to know what the structure of the roadway is. What is the pavement section? The soil inspector needs to know what soil types are going to be encountered in the cut section. They need to observe the soil types that are encountered in the cut section. Because we are going to specify specific soil types for our fill areas. So there may be materials in cut sections that are unsuitable to be reused as fill. So the inspector needs to be aware of what soils are going to be encountered in cut sections and make sure that the contractor is disposing of those inappropriate soils instead of using them in an our embankment fill. The inspector must also be aware of the soil types in the road and the embankment foundations. There may be certain soil deposits along the alignment that are going to need to be treated, over excavated, or dealt with in some manner, which will be specified in the contract documents and in the plans. The inspector's job is to make sure that they are familiar with which soil types are going to be encountered and what exactly we are going to be doing with those to improve them. And then of course, throughout the entire project, you are going to be documenting changed conditions. So you're going to be documenting uh, compaction methods, documenting soils that are placed, where they are placed, if color changes, if soil classification changes, etc., throughout the entire project. 